Hello all my after school Yu-Gi-Oh students, new and old. PDF here, back with another deck tutorial. As you may have heard, the Clash of Rebellions expansion set just released this past weekend. This set has brought us another TCG exclusive deck. Of course, you guys know what I'm talking about. Cosmos. There's been a lot of buzz around this new archetype. For months, all we knew about this deck was that it was based off an American fairy tale. What we didn't expect is that it's actually a blend of the two of the greatest American stories ever told. And like all great fairy tales, it begins once upon a time in a land far, far away. There lived an ordinary young and curious child who dreamed of leaving the farm and seeing the world. The dream comes true thanks to the help of magic beans, fairy godmothers, ruby slippers, or, you know, like a spaceship or something. The child meets a mysterious guide along the way who helps them awaken their true potential. The child becomes a hero and ends up saving the city. Oh, and along the way, they meet some pretty interesting characters. Now we know that the archetype is based on the Wizard of Oz in Star Wars and it is comprised of light, psychic, and machine type monsters. But who knows, in future sets, we might see some Cosmo monsters from the dark side. Let's look at what we have so far. The first monster is the foundation of the deck. Cosmo Farm Girl is a level 3 psychic. The first effect is a quick effect which banishes itself to special summon a level 4 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand. The second effect is very important and it propels the deck. When you inflict battle damage, you can search for a Cosmo card. The second monster is also psychic. Like the Farm Girl, Good Witch can banish itself to special summon a level 5 or higher Cosmo monster from your hand. You can also pay 500 life points to turn one of your opponent's monsters into face down defense position. Onto the ships, which are machine monsters. When Slip Rider is summoned, you can destroy one spell or trap card, and when it gets destroyed and sent to the grave, you can banish it to special summon a level 4 or lower Cosmo monster. And last is Forerunner, the boss monster of the deck. It cannot be targeted by your opponent. You gain 1000 life points at each of your semi phases, and like the other ship, when it gets destroyed and sent to the grave, you can banish it to special summon a level 6 or lower Cosmo monster. And that's it for the monsters so far. Cosmo Town is a field spell and it is vital to their engine because it keeps going. Once per turn, you can add a banished Cosmo monster to your hand for a small life point cost. You can also shuffle any number of Cosmo monsters into your deck and draw the same number of cards. Now this is important because it ensures that you will always either have a machine in your hand or a psychic in your deck to keep your loop going. Lastly and most importantly, if this field spell is destroyed, you can search for any Cosmo card, effectively replacing itself. All these cards may sound very good, but they're nothing without their support cards. These will all help you search out your combo pieces, protect your monsters, and help you OTK. So if you've seen the cards, you've built the deck, how do you play it? Well the deck starts off very linearly. You need to get Farm Girl on the field, she gets the ball rolling. Once she's on the field, you have to inflict battle damage. This is where an attack modifier like Honest comes in handy. If she is able to deal damage, the first thing you should search for is one of the ships if you don't have one already in your hand. Now your banished dodge is live and you can get Forerunner on the field. The last piece of the engine is the field spell. And just like that, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, you're off to see the wizard. From here, there are countless ways to play the deck. Just keep in mind that the psychics float higher level monsters from the hand and the ships float lower level monsters from the deck. So Farm Girl can special summon Good Witch and Forerunner can special summon Slip Rider if you're ever trapped. But don't fret, the deck isn't without its weaknesses. The three ways to stop this deck are by stopping the search, stopping the float, or wearing them down out of resources. If you don't allow yourself to take damage, they can't get their plus and this will severely slow them down. You won't be able to stop the psychics since they can dodge like ritual beasts, but once you bait out the ships, just don't destroy them. Bounce, shuffle, or banish the ships. Forerunner will be the hardest one to deal with since you can't target it, so you should run at least one out, like the new Storming Mirror Force. If all else fails, just wear down their resources. Keep track of the monsters in their hand, deck, grave, and banish zones. The worst places for cosmos are psychics in the grave and ships in the deck. And don't get too bummed out about losing game 1, because there are plenty of strong side deck options against Cosmos. Imperial Iron Wall and Artifact Lancia are poison for the deck. 
it stops their entire special summon mechanic. If you can't run those, then odds are you can run Macro Cosmos, Dimensional Fissure, or Soul Drain, which will stop half of their special summon mechanic. All Cosmos are bottomless targets. You can keep Farm Girl from inflicting damage with Mirror Force and D-Prism. This can also drain their resources quicker. Last options are Mistake and Wrongful Arrest, which can keep them from gathering the pieces altogether. There is no doubt in my mind that you will be seeing Cosmos in competition. If not a tier 1 deck, then at least as an anti-meta option. Decks that can dodge and float like this are always a popular option. And if you're like me, you'll have lots of fun bringing out those big beaters for an OTK. Not to mention, this is just the first release of the deck. Future expansions can only make this deck better. But until then, this deck will suffer a lot of inconsistent openings and dead draws. There are also many weak links which you can take advantage of and cripple the Cosmo player. So there is my breakdown of Cosmos. A bit out of this world, but not out of your league. I hope you've all learned something about Cosmos. Keep doing your Yu-Gi-Oh homework and be sure to subscribe so you can stay on course with Atsushiku Yu-Gi-Oh. PDF taking off.